Yesterday, a study came out looking at evidence to support a theory that COVID-19 came from a lab in Wuhan. This theory has floated around for a while and most people have laughed at it, but now it seems to have grown legs. I'm gonna go through the evidence presented in the study, but some important points to mention before doing so. First of all, the origin of the virus is currently unknown. Balaji Srinivasan, noted coronavirus expert, said that because the stakes are so high with accusing a lab of being the origin of the virus, extreme proof is needed before judgment should be made. And we currently don't have extreme proof. Evidence both for the virus coming from a lab and for it coming from the wet market in Wuhan are both circumstantial and should be treated as such. It's also important to note that coming from a lab doesn't necessarily mean that it was engineered or that this is a bioweapon. These are extreme claims and scientist Trevor Bedford, who studies viruses, provided a great explanation of why this is unlikely. But the study published yesterday, called Project Evidence, examines evidence that the virus may have been present at a biolab in Wuhan and may have been introduced into the greater Wuhan population by an infected lab worker or an animal. It doesn't attempt to investigate whether the release was intentional. One thing I'll say to start off with is that the study is well cited and doesn't attempt to provide concrete conclusions. Instead, it encourages the reader to make up their own mind and hopes to bring more awareness to safety protocols in research labs to give us the best chance of avoiding the next outbreak. Now, a more balanced study might have also included evidence about how the deadly SARS, Ebola and Zika viruses emerged from nature to make sure that people understand that labs aren't a necessary condition for a pandemic. The authors are accepting contributions to the study, so this may be information that's submitted for consideration later. But let's go through what evidence they do present. So at some point in late 2019, many people who visited the Huanan seafood market fell ill to a new disease. It's widely accepted now that the source of this virus was bats. But the Huanan seafood market didn't have bats for sale, and it would be unlikely for any bats to be living naturally in Wuhan, as it's a metropolis district that's avoided by most wildlife. Additionally, most bat species would be in hibernation around the time of the outbreak. Furthermore, a paper from The Lancet reported that many initial patients, 34% in fact, were not actually exposed to the Huanan seafood market in any way. And no epidemiological link was found between the first patient and later cases. This means that the first patient at the market was not responsible for spreading the virus to other cases, so there was a source elsewhere. What is clear is that the spread of the virus began to rise exponentially after it arrived at the Huanan seafood market. So where could this virus have come from? Close to this market are two research laboratories, the Wuhan Institute of Virology, which we'll call WIV, which is less than nine miles away from the market, and the Wuhan Center for Disease Control, less than three miles from the market. Let's start by looking at what was going on at the WIV. This week, it was revealed that in 2018, diplomatic cables were sent to Washington from US scientists who visited WIV, warning about lax safety procedures there and about their risky studies on coronaviruses from bats. The cable from January 19 read, the new lab has a serious shortage of appropriately trained technicians and investigators needed to safely operate this high containment laboratory. At the time, WIV issued a press release about one of these visits, but last week it was erased from their website. What research was being carried out at the WIV? Well, in 2007, they were involved with a study that combined a SARS-like virus that couldn't infect human cells with HIV, which does infect human cells, and by doing this, were able to create a new version of the SARS-like virus that could infect human cells. In 2014, the US government imposed a moratorium on funding of research that would make a virus more deadly or contagious. This is known as gain-of-function experiments. The WIV was conducting such dangerous gain-of-function research on the original SARS virus. There is speculation that one of the prior researchers at WIV, Huang Yanling, was patient zero, but there's no credible evidence that she was performing any research at WIV in 2019 but a couple of things make these rumors feel strange. A reporter from the Continental Beijing News inquired about the rumors and at first, WIV apparently denied that Huang Yanling worked there. Then after learning that her name was indeed on the internet saying as much, they acknowledged that she had worked at the Institute but that she'd now left the job and her whereabouts is unknown. 
The Beijing News asked two people at the WIV, and both of them said it was unclear whether there was a Huang Yanling in the institute. WIV released a statement saying that Yanling graduated in 2015, and after graduation, she's been working and living in other provinces. She has no infection and is in good health. Her profile and profile picture on the WIV webpage are missing. The study notes that what's interesting is these claims could easily be shut down by Huang Ling's public appearance. Surely she's aware of the rumours surrounding her on social media, and even if she was not aware, would it really be impossible for the Chinese government to get in touch with her and have her issue an in-person statement to the media? But none of that's happened. Another researcher at WIV, Chen Quanzhao, accused on Weibo, the director of the institute, of frequently selling infected lab animals at the Huanan seafood market. The director denied these allegations, and Chen afterwards claimed that she was hacked, and it wasn't her who posted the allegation. Now let's look at the Wuhan Center for Disease Control, less than three miles from the seafood market. They once kept horseshoe bats, a known reservoir of SARS, within its labs. And they had a researcher who quarantined on two separate occasions, once for coming in contact with bat blood after being attacked, and another time when he was apparently urinated upon in a cave whilst wearing inadequate personal protection. One theory that the study presents is the infected animal theory, which suggests it's plausible a lab animal was infected with COVID-19 either prior to arriving at the lab or as part of a spillover event at the lab. Multiple coronaviruses can infect the same bat, and these coronaviruses can mix their genes together to result in a new coronavirus. It only takes a few changes between two coronaviruses to result in a third coronavirus that can infect other animals, known as host switching. The paper suggests that such a recombination could have been more likely to occur in a laboratory housing many bats in close quarters, such as the Wuhan Center for Disease Control, than elsewhere in Wuhan. But meanwhile, WIV established a 96.2% genetic match between COVID-19 and a virus they sampled from a cave over a thousand miles away from Wuhan. So perhaps that bat genome did make its way to Wuhan via one of these labs. An accident at either of these labs could have resulted in patient zero. Both of these labs conducted experiments on SARS, some of which have resulted in variants of the virus, and they may still be holding such viruses today. Now, the study gives a good account of the timeline of the events in China that suggest a cover-up. And China itself has admitted to a cover-up and blames it on Wuhan officials, who were fired as a result. In December, when Dr. Li Wenliang spoke out about the existence of a worrying new virus discovered in the city, police in Wuhan made him admit to lying. Li died on February 7th after contracting the virus, and on March 19th, an investigation by the Chinese Communist Party found that the actions of law enforcement in Wuhan was irregular and improper, and they declared Dr. Li a martyr. But the question remains whether the cover-up was by the Wuhan officials, who were hoping to be spared punishment from Beijing, or whether Wuhan officials were scapegoated by the Chinese government. What is clear is Wuhan officials censored local medical professionals and reporters who attempted to sound the alarm on a new outbreak. They ordered local labs to destroy samples of the virus. The lab that first published the coronavirus genome was ordered to close for rectification the next day. Wuhan withheld the COVID-19 genome for a week after it had been sequenced. They continually insisted on no human-to-human -human transmission until scientists from Beijing were called in to verify, and they confirmed human-to-human -human transmission after just a day, and they pretended that everything was normal, still holding a massive 40,000 family banquet, despite the clear risk of further transmission. And Wuhan containment measures only became widespread after Xi's involvement. It's not clear how much Beijing knew about what was going on, and cover-ups don't necessarily mean that the virus came from a lab. There are lots of reasons for the Chinese to cover up this incident, as they are a government that doesn't like to be embarrassed. They also covered up the SARS epidemic, which came from nature and not a lab. As I said at the start, in order to make any conclusions about the virus, we need extreme proof. Balaji gives some examples of what extreme proof might look like, including authenticated and time-stamped correspondence from senior folks in China stating that it was a lab escape in November-December 2019, or researchers coming forward, or a time-stamped sequence of the full virus uploaded prior to December 2019. But all of this evidence, although circumstantial, 
is also very interesting to consider and it is worth people keeping an open mind to, especially if it means safety precautions will be taken more seriously. The embassy officials who visited WIV in 2018 asked the US government for support for the lab to help fix safety problems, but no assistance was provided. When this theory first came to light, I was curious but skeptical. I remain curious and skeptical, but there sure are a lot of coincidences. I look forward to more evidence being brought to light in either direction as the report is updated, but it's also possible that we may never know for sure where this virus came from. A huge thank you to all the members of NBTV for your support. It's because of you that I'm able to keep this channel going, so I really appreciate you. If anyone else would like to become a member of NBTV where you get access to all kinds of exclusive content like live streams and extended interviews and behind the scenes footage, then please sign up at naimibrockwell.com slash memberships. And if you found this video interesting or useful, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.